Uh, my name is Tim Shriver. I'm very proud to be joining this People's Filibuster today. Uh, I join this filibuster uh, with a background as an educator, with a long career working for the rights of people with intellectual and developmental differences. But I speak today a professional credential, but simply the credential of a citizen. I thank those who have gone before me, the organizers, my good brother, friends, Bridge and Alan, uh, for the hard work they've done and for all of you who are gathered here and all of you who will continue to watch and monitor this gathering of Americans to find the truth of America. There's an expression that politicians use a lot. Uh, I gather it comes from Winston Churchill, united we stand, divided we fall. I would say that this gathering is a reminder that it is not just united we stand and divided we fall, but actually united we stand or divided we die. There's a rumor in the country that we are deeply divided, that we hate each other, that we are hopelessly separate from each other, that we don't understand each other, that we don't get along with each other, that we can't make progress together. And I wonder if that's really true. I wonder if that's actually an accurate version of we, the people of this country, or if it's actually a version of American politics and American media. I wonder if the hatred and division and divisiveness we hear so much about isn't in part a fabrication of a political system that flourishes when we are divided and hateful and at each other's throats. I wonder if it's okay to say we are not divided on this issue. I wonder if it seems like news to the American people to find out that the American people actually violently agree on this issue of safety. I wonder if in this building and in these buildings where we gather in the spaces where people before us have gathered to try to do the will of the people, if our challenge isn't not just to tell them the will of the people so that they will act on the will of the people, not the will of their bases so that they will act on the will of the people, not the will of their re-election campaigns. We're here to ask members of the United States Senate to respond to the will of the American people. It is not the people that are the problem. The people the vast majority of the people are very clear that they want change. So what would that change look like? We actually know this and have known it, as those before me have said, for quite a long time. Simple stuff, folks. Background checks. What a shocking idea. It's obvious that we need background checks for people that would own weapons of death. It's obvious that the Second Amendment doesn't cover the right to carry a shoulder-fired shoulder -fired missile. That's a weapon. That's an armament. We don't have the right to carry it. We shouldn't have the right to carry it. We shouldn't have the right to own a helicopter gunship. These are weapons that are not designed to be covered by the Second Amendment. They are the common sense understanding of American people that assault weapons should not be weapons that are entitled uh, to be carried by the members of uh, a militia. So it used to be, up until recently, that people would come here on issues like this and say, I'm sorry to say that no matter how much you speak, this legislation is dead on arrival. We've all heard it. It's good to give the speech, good to write the petition, good to call for a floor debate, good to get it into a, a hearing, good to get it into committee. But let me just tell you, gang, it's dead on arrival. I think we should cease using that language. Dead on arrival applies to too many Americans. It's a cold and calculating term to describe 
when moms and dads and brothers and sisters rush to the hospital, hoping against hope that their little brother, sister, son or daughter can make it. And the doctors say, I'm sorry. And the doctors say, I'm sorry. Your child, get rid of the language in this place that calls to mind the suffering of generations, millions of Americans, generation after generation, who have heard those words spoken to them. As we sit here, our children are being you know what you have to do, Paul, to stop someone from coming in that door? You might not, but your children do. You know what you'd have to do if you heard it right now, Bridge? Where would you go? Your children do. Your teachers do. You know what they've been trained to do? Do you know how, Zach? Teachers do. You don't have to wait to know that the trauma is being visited over and over and over again in our communities. So we're asking the representatives of this extraordinarily great country to take a chance. Who wouldn't? If there were a river behind me and a child were flowing down it, who wouldn't jump? Every one of us would, even if we can't swim. You see the child, you jump in. Who wouldn't take a chance if you saw a truck coming and a child in the middle of the road? Who would? Billy, you'd run out without even knowing that you'd done it to try to stop and save the child's life. My family, I, I know this experience very well. Two uncles and one father who served this country in World War II, they took a chance. Two came home, one didn't. Three uncles that entered the service of this country, one lived to raise his children, two didn't. We're not asking you, members of the Senate, to take that kind of chance. We're not asking you to jump into a river to risk your life. We're not asking you to put on the uniform of this country and risk your life. We're asking you to risk your position and your base. That's not much to ask. That's not much to ask. The future, in my view, does not belong to Democrats. It does not belong to those who get reelected the most. It belongs to those who will either bring us together or tear us apart. The future belongs to people who see in gun owners in this country good and decent people like my dad who taught me how to hunt with a shotgun, who want to keep their family safe, who understand gun safety, and who want safety regulations for the country. The future belongs to those who will not see others on the other side of a political dispute as their enemy, but as someone who can be joined together in common sense reforms for safety. The future belongs to those who care most about the country and not about their party. It is very clear to us Americans, citizens, that political forces inspire and encourage political leaders to divide the country. Find the issue that will divide the population and drive it hard. Demonize the other person. Violate the other person's dignity. It is a winning formula. No more. Not on this one. We've suffered too much. We're only asking you to do the will of the people. You to do the will of the people. This country is not divided on safety. This country is united. Yes, we want you to risk 
your position in the next primary battle. Yes, we do. All of you. Take that risk for our country. Others have taken far greater risks. It's now your turn. Thank you very much.